This is my South Bend 9 inch metal lathe. I've had it for about 11 or 12 years now, but since moving, which is about two years ago now, it's been in storage. It is easily my favorite tool to use, and so I really miss it. Even before moving, this was set up on an old steel desk, which was way too low for me, and every time I used it, it would hurt my back. So I've been meaning to build a new stand for it forever, for as long as I've had it, and I've never gotten around to that. And I think the reason why I never get around to it is because it's too big a project. Making the whole thing all at once was just overwhelming for me. I need a structure, like a frame, that will transfer the weight of the lathe to the floor, without wobbling. I need cabinets underneath it for storage. It needs to have a pan on the top to catch the chips and the drips. And I wanted to make a nice power switch that runs all the way along the front edge of the table. And all of that stuff all at once was just such a big project to take on, especially when it was still mounted to the steel desk. It just wasn't a high priority because it was already working. And the thing that's changed that's made me able to tackle this project is the modular cabinets, because this just basically eliminated half of the project. Since this is a standardized module, and I already have a process in place for how to make these, it's really easy for me to just knock some of these out as the stand. And now I just need to make the tabletop, which is a much more manageable project that I can actually motivate myself to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make an MDF base layer to go directly on top of the cabinets, and then I'll make a steel pan that goes on top of the MDF. This is actually not quite tall enough yet, so I want it to be about three inches higher than this. In order to do that, I'm just gonna put another four layers of MDF underneath this, but those layers don't need to be this full size of the tabletop, so I'm just gonna make them as big as the cabinets. These inner layers are kind of a patchwork of scraps. The purpose of all this MDF is just to raise it up a little bit and also to add mass for vibration damping. So it doesn't matter if there's holes in here. And I intentionally left this channel down the middle for a wire to go from the power switch at the front to a junction box at the back. I'm driving these screws basically at random, and once the glue is dried, I'll take them all back out, so there won't be any embedded screws in the finished product. Before I glue on any more layers, I want to embed some T-nuts in this slab, and those will be used to hold it down to the cabinets. The T-nuts are going to be embedded sort of in the middle of this layer, and that's because of the length of bolts I want to use. I'm just using bolts that I already have. Now that the glue is dried, I can take all of those screws out. Now that the four base layers are done, I can glue together the two larger top layers. I cut all of these MDF layers a little oversized, so here I'm doing the gross work of trimming them down to final size and also just cleaning them up and making them nice and flush. For the ends of this big block, I couldn't run it through the table saw, so I had to use the track saw to cut as far as I could, and then a flush trim bit to finish that cut. I want the corners of the pan to have a 45 degree angle, so here I'm cutting that off of the MDF base layer. 
and here I'm trimming those two base layers flush to each other. I don't care about this being a specific size, I just want it to be flush and smooth. And I added a big 3 8 inch round over to the bottom edge of this. I positioned the thick layer where I wanted it and then marked all the way around it. That way I know where to put glue and I will also be able to position it more easily once I go to screw this back on. And then I just clamped it down and also put a couple screws in from the bottom before flipping it over. The next day I removed all those screws and then went around and put a bunch of counter bores in this for where there will be some T-nuts that will hold the pan down. And then I drilled a small pilot hole all the way through all the MDF where each of those counter bores are. Those pilot holes act as a guide from the bottom side to be able to drill a large counter bore for the head of the bolt. So I have the edges marked all the way around and now I'm going to use this drill to transfer the locations of all of these holes through to the metal sheet. I don't want to drill through the metal sheet because that will create a path for oil to leak through it. So I'm just going to use the drill bit to make a little divot and then I'll weld nuts on where those divots are so that I can use bolts to hold it on. At each of these locations that I marked, I'm going to weld on one of these T-nuts. These are plain steel T-nuts, so I don't need to worry about hazardous fumes. So I'll weld those down and then, and then I'll be able to put bolts through the holes in here and into the T-nuts to hold the plate down to the MDF. And hopefully by having an 8 inch grid of these, that will hold it tight enough that it won't rattle or anything. I put in a few bolts around the perimeter of the pan just to hold it in place and then I had my friend help me lift the pan onto the floor and then lift the lathe onto the pan. So I originally had this designed with the feet centered on the base, but this is with them centered and the lathe just looks really off-center. So I'm gonna shift the feet off-center to try to make the lathe look more centered. So now the offset from the end of the cover here to the edge of the pan is the same as from the end of the bed over here. So the extremes of the lathe are centered instead of the feet. I think this looks better. I scratched a line around inside of all of the mounting holes using an ice pick. So that transfers the whole locations. It's good to see that my scribing shows up, and I also traced around the outside just for another reference in case I need it. So now I need to position the motor back here and mark where it goes. At each of those mounting locations, I drilled a hole through the pan and then used this block to guide the drill straight to drill through the MDF. I 
I installed the rest of the bolts that hold the pan down. I'm here by myself today and I'm not strong enough to pick up this whole thing by myself. So I just tipped it up and then added these clamps for security. And now I can counter bore the holes where the lathe feet bolts will come through. The way I'm gonna mount the lathe to this pan is using a threaded rod that goes through these holes. And the threaded rod will actually be welded into the pan here. That way the pan doesn't have any holes in it anywhere. So there's nowhere for oil to get through. So on the bottom side, this will just have a nut and a washer in this counter bore. And then on the top side, the lathe will be held down by another nut and washer on the other end of the threaded rod. They have a big fender washer and a lock nut on the bottom side. And for now, I just have a nut holding them up here. But once I get to the welding step, I will replace this nut with a solid bead of weld all the way around. So for now, we're done with this being tipped up. There's nothing else I need to do on the bottom side. So I'll tip this back down, put in the motor bolts, and then we can move on to making the frame that goes around the perimeter. I need to do something to turn this into more of a pan and I could bend the edges up but I don't have a break and I did do a little test. This was just hammered over the edge of a piece of flat bar and it actually produced a pretty decent result. I like how this looks but this edge is still sharp so I would want to somehow trim this out a little bit. Plus this took a long time. To do it to the whole pan would take days. So instead I'm just going to weld on a piece of square tubing. That'll give it more structure along the edge. It'll cover up that sharp edge and it'll provide a lip along the edge. So I'll just miter this and wrap it all the way around. So I've cut all four sides and I've clamped them in place. Now I'm going to tack weld them and then I will cut the corner pieces to fit. One more thing before I move on to welding all of this solid, I wanna weld on the hinges that will be for the power switch, which is gonna be a bar running all the way along the front edge, which will pivot in and out. So for the hinges, I'll be using this socket head cap screw and a bushing and a coupling nut. I'm gonna weld the bushing onto this tube. I'll use this to space it away a little bit, just to be sure that the coupling nut will be able to turn. It's pretty hard to see what's going on here, but this piece is clamped to the front of this, and then my hinge bushing is clamped to the back of this piece. So that's making sure that it's in line with the face. And then I have the coupling nut clamped up to the bottom of the tube with this shim in between. And now that that coupling nut is clamped in place, we can take this off because we're done with it. So now the front of this bushing is in line with the front of this and it's straight. And I'll just tack weld this on right here. This piece of angle iron will be the power switch itself, and I cut the ends off at 45 degrees so it's not sharp. I clamped this up with the angle iron flush to the front of the frame, and now I can weld the angle iron onto the coupling nuts. Here you can see how it's able to pivot in and out, and I'll be able to turn it off with my leg. 
Now that everything's tacked in place, I can finish welding everything solid. Okay, that was a lot of welding, but I've got it welded solid all the way around, so it should be fairly oil tight, so it won't be leaking oil from that crack. I also welded these solid and also put a tack weld on the back side just to give them some extra strength. Now I need to weld these bolts in place. When I loosened the nut on this one, the pan kind of sprung up, so I just hacked this together to push the pan back down so that the bolt will be at the right place relative to the pan. I sanded and cleaned everything up, and now I'm going to give it a coat of clear paint. I want to maintain the look of just raw materials for this. And here I'm bolting it down to the cabinets. The feet on this lathe are relatively small. And so I am going to put a plate on here that will spread that weight out over a slightly wider area. I'm going to be using stock that I already have, and it's not very much bigger than the feet, but it's a little bigger, so it'll help. Also, since these welds are on the top side, if I tried to put the lathe directly on here, it would be sitting on those welds. So this way I can drill big holes in the plate that I put under the foot and that will raise the lathe up to be above these welds. Also, it will raise the lathe a little bit higher off the pan, which will give me a little bit more clearance for when I'm turning the cranks here so that my knuckles won't be hitting this. The lathe is surprisingly heavy, so it was pretty difficult to get it on here. Something is wrong. If I look at it from here, I can see this is not aligned. The motor mount is too far that way, and the belt is not going to line up. I don't know how this happened. I double, triple, quadruple checked the CAD and made sure that I made this exactly according to the CAD, so the CAD is wrong. Where I got the dimensions for the CAD was by modeling this in my old shop before taking this off of the old steel desk. So I must have measured it wrong there and modeled it wrong and now built it wrong. So now the challenge is to figure out how far over this needs to be in order for the belt to line up. And then I have to figure out how to take these bolts out, put new bolts in that are like an inch over or whatever, and still keep this all sealed so there aren't any holes for oil to leak through. It would appear that there's some side-to-side -side adjustment here, but there's actually not, because you see this divot right here? That's intended for the set screw that goes in here to hold this to the shaft, so that locks the side-to-side -side position as well as the rotation. So I went ahead and put in that set screw to find the position where the pulley wants to be, and then I can use a ruler against the side of it to measure how far over it needs to be. And I determined it needs to be one inch exactly. So I kind of panicked at first, but I don't think this is actually going to be that bad. So all I'm going to do is cut these threaded rods off on both the top and the bottom, and then just weld in three new ones all one inch over from the old ones. Not a big deal.
This blanket will protect the lathe from the sparks while I cut these bolts off and weld the new ones on. I drilled through the metal and now I want to use a block to guide the drill straight for this hole, but the block doesn't fit against this. So I'll just put a roll of tape. That should guide it straight. It also nicely contained the mess. My strategy for welding stuff that's zinc coated is to just do it outside and hold my breath while welding and then step way back before I inhale. So I could grind these old bumps off flush so that this plate would sit flat on them. But if I do that, there's some risk that there will be a pinhole through the pan for oil to leak through. Probably not a big deal, but the other option is to just drill some holes in the bottom of this, not quite all the way through that will go over those bumps. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, moment of truth. Did that fix it? Looks pretty good to me. So the belt lines up now, but I'm not quite out of the weeds yet because for some reason this link is on a big angle. I can put this in either way, but if I put it in from this side, then it's on a big angle the other way. And I know that's not how it was before, so I'm not sure how this goes. And looking at it from the back, I think this does indicate that this was slightly farther over before, which probably actually means that the belt was out of alignment for all these years. And for the first time now, I have it right. So now that lines up nicely. Well, this is still a bit messy, but the lathe is all set up. I wiped it down and re-oiled everything and it is completely ready to go. The only thing that's missing is power. So. I wired up a cord to the motor, but I need to get power to the other end of it, and that has to be switched somehow, which is what the next video is going to be about. This power switch. If it's not obvious, this will be something that I pull to turn on and push to turn off, and it's going to be so nice to have it running all the way across because there's sometimes that I'm working over here on this end, and I want the power switch here, but then there's other times that I'm working from over here on this side, and I want the power switch here. So this is going to be amazing. But I'm saving that for the next video because I think it deserves its own video. And I also don't quite have a fully fleshed out design, so I need to figure some things out and might as well release this one in the meantime. So I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for watching.